Hey, what's up? It's Meredith from iHeartRadio, and I'm here with Tegan and Sarah. What's up? Hey, what's Hello. Up? It is so good to have you here. I, uh, <laughs> I was, you know, just kind of taking in your schedule right now. You've got a new album. You've got a new book. You've got a tour. Mm-hmm. I mean, this has got to be one of the busiest times in your life. It's, ever. <laughs> you know what? Every time we put out a record, I say, oh, my God, this is the busiest I've ever felt or I'm the most tired. <laughs> but my girlfriend, who I've been with for 10 years, she brought up email basically from every album cycle where I'm like, I'm having a nervous breakdown. I need to buy a day timer. You have to help me. I'm freaking out. I do it every <laughs> album cycle. I always feel overwhelmed. We're Virgos, so mm-hmm. I feel like we like to be very organized and then also we're, we we are those existential crisis Virgos who are like I feel trapped by my schedule I can't do this anymore you know we're like both of those people well happy belated birthday by the thank way you. thank you thanks. yeah and I know um you know Tegan eight minutes older is that is eight that minutes correct? yeah so you have <laughs> enjoyed of, this birthday for longer yeah. how does it feel I feel pretty good okay. <laughs> you know honestly it's funny it's cliche but like as you get older your birthdays are kind of like you're like eh, whatever mm-hmm. but um we spent it on an airplane and we got to talk to Terry Gross at Fresh Air and my mom came over for some afternoon champagne and I, I have to be honest it was a nice birthday happy to hopefully have the skin of I don't know like a 32 year old I mean I would so I'm hoping for 27 27 girl. thank you yeah. there thanks yeah. for the birthday <laughs> gift so so, th- so I feel fine the skin well, of a 27 year old older <laughs> wiser and still looking 27 i don't know i don't really actually care but no we're i'm thrilled and i agree with sarah we we take a lot on but it's um i'm really grateful to be able to do what we do still yeah. well ninth studio album ninth album let's yeah. talk about it obviously this was an album that you went back to kind of go forward mm-hmm. so talk about uh finding i'm assuming some some real gems <laughs> from those early writing years so Tegan and I wrote a memoir about high school, which we were in high school in the 1990s. There it is. Loved it. And, uh, and we were early songwriter creative types. We were mostly in sort of like more like punk rock vibes at that time, like lots of thrashy guitar singing, you know, with like raspy voices, that sort of thing. And we recorded a bunch of songs and we sort of launched our career, got signed, all that stuff didn't really think about it 20 years goes by you know people will ask us so you guys started out in uh, the 90s garage wars yada 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 move on but when we started writing the book it was like well I think it probably it would be uh, responsible to go back and actually listen to the music really like remember that time um, so that when we write about it it's accurate and when we started listening to the music it was beyond surprise for me I just thought okay these are actually really good you know, they're rough. They're scrappy. We were 16 years old. We were using tape recorders in our bedroom to record them. But the melodies are there. The ideas are there. The 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 confidence and the sort of like innate, um, that instinct, mm-hmm. like to do something in a certain way, it sounded like us. Like it just, it was really cool. And so we just started talking about like, what do we do with this music? Do we let people hear it like this? Do we re-record it? Does it become our new album? And it's our new album. Okay, so I hadn't realized that. So the album came out of the book. You, yes. you went back to do the book and then the album. Yes. Okay, I yeah. like that. I like that a lot, actually. That puts a lot of things in perspective because I've, I've been fortunate enough to hear both the album and the book. Yeah. Obviously, they go uh, incredibly well together. But it would seem that in order to go back like that, you really have to feel like you're in a good place now. Otherwise, I don't think you could look back with as much kindness or as much, <laughs> you know, otherwise it might seem a bit scary. Yeah, I mean, I think enough time has gone by but I, I also think it was hard and it was scary and we did lots of cringing and <laughs> um, we both had a wide range of, of reactions and emotions about it. But I think because um, I think it's I think because it's not just the origin story of our band, but the origin story where we start to really identify as queer people and to really find our voices as women and as activists, it felt like a really good time to go back and sort of write that story Mm. and because it wasn't documented the way everything is now it also felt like an opportunity for us to finally get to in our own words tell our story um you know if you're a band now your story will be told in real time on the internet and social media and there's a million different 40 characters yeah yeah, and 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 there's just so so many outlets and whatever and Mm -hmm. um but in the early part of our career we were teenagers that didn't exist and then even once we got signed those first few years the press and media didn't care about us yet, right? We were just developing and we were really young. So we saw an opportunity to face our fears and go back to that time. And and uh, I think what we discovered there was really important and we're really, you know, I think it became more 
purposeful the more we wrote you know mm. that as young people we had something to say we had something worthwhile to say and it's a, a lesson to us all to listen to young people because you know you're feeling and experiencing things and it's so visceral and it's so brutal and it's so real and um i think also i realized that we didn't have any compassion for ourselves we had you know really written off the early part of our lives as being oh we were just young and we were silly and it's like we got signed yeah like we got time and then and then we got signed the second time by neil young yeah Yeah. like there was so much value to the early part of our story and we had sort of bought that same narrative we all do which is like Mm. ugh, high school who wants to look at that and it's like you know, we're all finding ourselves during that time. So yes. anyway, so it was it was definitely, it was a tough journey to go back and do it, but it felt like enough time had passed and it felt worthwhile to do it. And I'm really proud we did it. And um, I think both the book and the music, it, it represents who we were then, but I think a huge part of those people still exist in us and it felt worthwhile. Well, I love this quote that you say about the record. This is a record we could never have made as teenagers, full of songs we could never have written as adults. Yeah. That was like, it took me a second. I'm like, wait, my brain is exploding. And I was like, that should be a movie. It just is really uh, prophetic and really something you couldn't do in any other way than right now. No. Um, in your career. So congratulations on that. Thanks. You've released it on cassette as well, which I got to say, do some of your younger fans write you and say, what is that? Oh my God, I saw so many tweets of people being like, I ordered a, a tape deck, my first yeah. one off the internet. And I'm like, Phew. You guys should be getting a cut of that. You need a piece of like cassette players that are going away. I don't have. I don't have a tape player, so I don't even have. I don't have a device in which I can play CDs, like tapes. Like it's it's so strange. I sometimes I actually people think, want it though. They want the yeah. Tangible. Sometimes I actually think it's the young people who are keeping some of this like mm-hmm. nostalgic stuff alive. Totally. Because like I'm like fully the old person who has adopted like the uh, streaming. Like I don't. Yeah. I, I'm like, why would I want a CD? Like I, I I'm surprised the record label even lets us make them anymore. Like I'm I'm sort of sort of I mean, sort of shocked. You were saying the right stuff on iHeartRadio. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, serious. Oh, we're grabbing that clip for sure. Yeah. Uh, in the in the memoir. Um, you have uh, some wonderful people that, that write about reading it off the top. Jan mm-hmm. Arden being one of them, mm-hmm. Alan Page, Busy Phillips, and also Augustin Burroughs. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's got to be one of the best memoir writers on the planet. And he had some pretty amazing words about this book. So how, how does that feel? Uh, it feels really good. I um, We're like, eh. Eh, you know what do we need feedback like that for? <laughs> but when you but honestly we died we were so excited. no totally yeah. you know we met 10 years ago and uh he had a book called uh his follow-up to running with scissors was called a wolf at the table mm-hmm. and he for the audio version of it he had a bunch of artists write original songs so it sort of created a soundtrack for yeah. the for the audio audiobook and i wrote a song um for that um and so we got to hang out. We got to meet. We did a book event together. And I still cringe about this, but I told him at the at the event, he was so nice and so generous and thoughtful. And it was such a cool experience. Um, but afterwards, I was like, yeah, I've been writing stuff like since I was out of high school. And I'm going to totally write a book someday, which I was like, I mean, I've thought about it a million times since, like how embarrassing. But he gave me his email and said, send me stuff. And oh. he was so kind. He, basically, the point of this is that he was incredibly generous. Um, so I reached out to him when we finished the book and I asked him if he would be one of our early first readers. And he said, of course, please send me the book. Um, and when he emailed me, he wrote me a big, long piece. Obviously the quote that's on the book is just a piece of that, but, um, I totally wept. I was so in shock. I sent it to Sarah and I couldn't believe it. I think Augustine is an example of what I hoped we were able to do with our book. When I read Augustine's first book, I felt like I entered his world and I felt such deep compassion and empathy for him and I felt like it was so relatable even though our lives were nothing like each other's. And my hope with high school is that we were able to do that. And um, all the people who read er- were early readers um, and gave quotes, it was incredibly generous of them. And it's also such a different process than when you make an album. Like I was when you make an album, that, it is yeah. like you keep it under wraps, you right. don't let anybody hear it. In the book world, it's like, it's just, like, sh- yeah. Yeah. It wide and They're like, we made a million of them and gave them to everybody. We're at the subway station asking for quotes, and we're just like, oh my god! But, but it was for me, really it was just scary. it was an it was an honor. It was an honor mm. to reach out to some of. I mean, the people you just all listed are, are people that I feel. It, I have to pinch myself that we even know them and that they were willing to read our work. And I hope what it does is it tells, there's such a wide range of people. I hope yes. it tells the wide range of people that would like them that there is something here for, for anyone who's gone through adolescence, who's who's struggled, who's felt like an outsider, not knowing what's going to come next. You know. Well, you speak a lot in the book about, um, uh, about your sexuality, but also about being twins. And I hadn't really had that <laughs> perspective yet on, mm-hmm. on how, how close that is, kind of what a struggle that was, but also, um, you know, ultimately what a sense of peace you get from 
doing this with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have spent 20 years being very bad twin ambassadors. Like whenever <laughs> we get asked about twin stuff, we're like, next. Like we just, I don't know. I think there are a number of reasons why we resisted really delving into that part of the psychology of what makes our band work. I think partly just because there is, um, there is a there is an internal struggle you're you're deeply connected to one another but you also want to be an individual and it's a very difficult situation when the world around you sees you as being the same and so um i i always make this joke too when we first started out in the music business i didn't think people were mature enough to ask us appropriate questions we Mm. would actually get asked you know, questions relating our sexuality, meaning that we were both gay, to incest. I mean, that's a real thing that would happen. And so we became extremely guarded about being exoticized, fetishized, exploited in any way. And so our twinness was so linked to our sexuality that it was sort of hard for us to want to talk about it. So in the book, we do explore this idea that, yes, you can have the same face and grow up in a bedroom right next to this other person and not tell them everything, not be their best friend, not share all of your seminal life experiences. And, you know, specifically around being queer, I did not tell Tegan. It did not make me feel safe or comfortable to think about telling Tegan. In fact, it was almost the opposite. I felt the most afraid of what Tegan knew or didn't know. And when I started to realize that Tegan was also gay, I remember the thought being more of like a, oh God, now there's two of us that are gay. (laughs) I have to figure out how to protect yeah. both of us yeah. in this like crazy scary world. So for me like it was really it was really um cathartic to write about that because I think it sort of shows like why maybe we haven't always been the most tolerant of people who are like come on now can you read each other's minds like I'm like this is a serious topic. Can you get serious right now? Say, if, the, if you have you two in front of you, the last thing I want to know about is reading minds. I like, mean, you so come on. Yeah, like, yeah. but people would be goofy, you know, like, yeah. can, if I punch her in the arm, do you feel it in your yeah. arm? And I'm just like, what kind of wacky twin stuff do people read on the internet? Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand. So I think, like, now we're older women who, you know, who are more... Uh, taken more seriously and yeah. so we can have more sophisticated conversations about these things that are very important and and sometimes very textured and difficult to talk about well i'm really glad that you dive into complexities both in your music and also in this book i'm uh, really have loved speaking with you so I nice to have you. longer you. but uh yeah high school is the book and hey i'm just like you is the album and congratulations on both thank, thank you thank you very much